Greetings, 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 my sports to the bone people. And we are back at it again. Yes, man, it's a beautiful Saturday. Hope you guys are enjoying the weekend. Hope everything is going well so far. All right, so a couple of things I want to take a look at in this one. So we see where Oman and Nepal, they will be in the Caribbean next year. Yes, they are going to be in the Caribbean next year. And we're talking about cricket. So we're going to take a look at that. Plus we're also going to be talking about a couple of former players that have been um, doing some commentary work with uh, Reds Pereira. Uh, similar to a workshop, you know, the players just getting their feet wet and getting an idea of what it is like to do some commentary work. So we're going to talk about that. Plus we had an exciting game this morning between Pakistan and New Zealand. Pakistan ended up winning that one on the D, uh, the Duckworth Lewis system. So just give a listening ear as I work my way through this one. And if you are wondering about the Super 50, while I'm making this, you know, they are there waiting on the start of play because of rain. So just relax on yourself and give a listening ear to this one, man. All right. So let us kick things off with um, the, the, a couple of former players from the region, you know, going to a workshop with Joseph Ritz Pereira. So I saw this little bit of information a couple of days ago. I think it was yesterday or the day before, but didn't get a chance to really um, take a look at it. Taking this one from um, taking this one from, from, from the Express News. And the headline says, Former cricketers invited to exclusive commentary workshop, workshop with Joseph Reds Pereira. Yeah, man. So, you know, good to see the veteran working with um, the youngsters. So it says, Former cricketers Stephen Jacobs, Leon Johnson, Devinja Bishu and several others have received invitations to participate in upcoming commentary workshop. They said the exclusive event will um, be presided over by the renowned cricket broadcaster Joseph Reds Pereira. Um, they say scheduled to take place from November 16th to 18th. The workshop will be hosted at the prestigious, prestigious um, Georgetown Cricket Club over the course of three days. The so participants will develop, um, will delve deep into uh, intricate art of cricket commentary and uh, you know they will look at different ways how to bring across um, news and how to analyze stuff. So you know they're saying they are taking it to a different level. You know that is what they, they, they are dubbing it as, taking it to another level. So they say, um, they say this unprecedented gathering of experienced cricketers and seasoned comment um, commentators um, expect uh, is expected to be great. They say Reds Ferreira promises to be a remarkable opportunity for the invitees to enhance their skills and insight in the realm of cricket commentary. Right, they say the workshop is expected to cover the fundamental aspects of cricket commentary, offering a unique platform for sharing experiences, referring techniques, and broad heading their knowledge, broadening their, their knowledge of the game. So it's always good when you have people that, that would have played the game at a fairly um high fairly competitive level, you know, taken to the commentary box. Uh, during the game, they can relate personal experience or experiences. They can um, help to break down uh, different stuff as it relates to, uh, you know, tactics that uh, captains might be using on the field. You know, we know Bishu would have played for West Indies. Leon Johnson has been there for a while and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's really good to see that. I uh, guess it's the next generation of regional commentators that we are looking at. Professionals, not people just going on... Because a lot of who we see doing commentary work, um, they are really analysts, you know, analyzing stuff. But, you know, when you are the lead commentator, you need to be able to, 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 to keep people engaged. You know, I don't know much about it because I'm no professional at it. But, you know, just listening to it and know that sometimes listening to a cricket game, especially on the radio, 
you know, that can decide whether the, the person that is commentating can decide whether or not you want to listen or not. So, you know, um, shout out to Joseph Fritz Pereira and the others for getting um, this together. All right. So moving on, still a little bit of cricket, though. So 2024, as you guys know, we will be hosting the T20 World Cup alongside the United States of America. And two teams, they have qualified, right? They have made it through the Asian Games, I think is what they're calling it. And it's Nepal and Oman. They have actually qualified and will be taking part. So they say Nepal, taking it from ESPN Quick Info. It says Nepal and Oman won their respective semifinals at the ICC Asia um, region qualifiers to book their spot at the 2024 uh, T20 World Cup. They say, while Oman routed Bahrain by 10 wickets, Nepal overcame UAE in a tricky chase to win by 8 wickets. So, um, we're going to be seeing a bit more of these two teams. They are going to be in the Caribbean there. So, you know, good to see them. Um, good to see that cricket is growing. And as I said, you know, my people, if West Indies don't improve, you can expect um, that teams are going to continue to pass us because at the end of the day, people continue to invest, people continue to work on their game. You understand? So while we are there trying to develop and trying to improve other teams, plus the teams that are already there, they are looking to improve, they are playing games, you know, they are looking to get a good structure together. So, you know, that is something that we need to um, bear in mind. So we can say that we can continue to say that these associate teams are dominating, are winning games and we are not winning because they are putting in the work, you know. So I just another them thing there. Uh, talking about the current World Cup that is going on though, this morning we would have seen New Zealand scoring 401 for six of their 50 overs, but losing to Pakistan by the way of um, the Duckworth Lewis um, system. Right, so Pakistan ended up making 200 for one of 25.3 overs. Couple of centurions in that game. So Ravindra for New Zealand getting another century, scoring 108 of 94 deliveries with 15 fours and one six. Would have also seen Kane Williamson getting 95 of 79 with 10 fours and two sixes. So Glenn Phillips made 41, Chapman made 39. So those were the main contributors with the bat. Now, bowling for Pakistan, uh, Mohamed Wazim, he bowled 10 overs, picked up 3 for 60. So he was the main contributor with the ball. Now, when it was time for Pakistan to chase my viewers and subscribers, Mohamed Rizwan, he really and truly showed his worth in that chase there. He made, well, not, not Mohamed Rizwan, um, Fakhar Zaman, he actually scored 126 of 81 deliveries with 8 fours and 11 sixes. So Zaman really carried it across the line for them. 126 of 81 deliveries. Uh, Babar Azam, the captain, he was left not out on 66 of 63 as they were able to get um, the total that was given to them too and finished off on 200 for one of 25.3 overs. So. You know, shout out to them. Tim Southey got the loan wicket for New Zealand. So that is pretty much it, my people. As I record this one, we have another game going on. I think Australia is playing. So if we get the game um, in the Super 50, you know that later on today, I will definitely be taking a look at those two. Big up on yourselves, eh?